They'll just accept. Leave meeting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm here with two of the greatest brass players in the world, um, Eric Reed and, and uh, Kevin. Listen to me. Uh, Kevin Cuff. Sorry about that. Because, you know, what I'm reading it says Kevin's Pixel. On your oh, uh, I, get, my phone. I looked at that and I thought, oh my God, what's his name? So, <laughs> Who is that? I, who's one of my colleagues at Yale, so I see him pretty frequently. Um, and uh, we're here because uh, both of these gentlemen are, are teaching at uh, Idlewild Arts this summer, actually starting on Monday. And we're still accepting students, so. Um, if you if you like what you see, <laughs> sign up. It's for it's for high school kids between thirteen and eighteen, and uh, uh, it's a great it's it's a great program. We've got classes in addition to master classes and lessons. We've got classes about how to be how to be a musician in the twentieth century, actually taught by Astrid Baumgartner, uh, one of our Yale colleagues, and. Um, uh, and lots of other stuff too. How to listen to music, uh, wh what the different orchestras in the world are like, and lots of stuff. So, um, so let me ask you guys: what What have you been doing? Uh, what have you been doing during the pandemic? Uh, what have I been doing? Um, I don't know. No, I. It's been uh, It's been really great, actually. It's been a huge challenge, as we were just talking, Ransom. Um, you know, a huge challenge to find the the routine um, to to fit in all the those things on those to do lists that you've been wanting to do uh, and now think you have time to do, um, but then uh, also juggling that with um, all the all the sort of forced realities of of a situation where you're at home all the time. So, uh, but. You know, at, at my house, at least, it's been it's been kind of amazing how that uh, that has all kind of, as I said, eased into a bit of normalcy. Like we have a routine with our kids, and uh, we go outside at certain times. They still are taking naps and um, giving us all a lot of time to do other stuff. So uh, I'm baking a lot. Um, I'm writing a lot. I'm doing uh, a lot of a lot of those things that I kind of had always wanted to be doing, uh, creative projects and stuff like that. So yeah. Wait a minute. How, how, do, how do you find this time again? What, what is the secret method to find you? You hire some people outside? <laughs> yeah, we have we have some gnomes that live with us that take care we of have the dishes. No food. time at our house. Our, our time is not our own in our house. I like when people are saying talking they do all this creative project stuff. But it's like, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not we're not moving. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I wasn't doing it before when we started moving, but packing. Yeah. Except it's you amazing. were, Kevin. We put together Eric a number Reed, of Eric, videos together. Eric Reed is a, a man of of many many talents. He's multi talented and he's very good at many different things. So we all admire Eric uh, in the quintet, but I, I admire Eric personally as well on a, on a, on a deeply personal level. And I'm actually not kidding about that. I, Eric is like one of my favorite people um, precisely because of that, because he's able to sort of have a regular life with a family and two kids. And then like, you know, I know he uh, didn't play his horn for a little bit of time because of the family pressures. And then we, we did this, the ABQ, it did this um, quarantine video. You can find it on YouTube. It's a thing. YouTube's a thing where you find videos. You, I don't know if you kids are into that kind of thing or not, but uh, you can find an American Brass Quintet video that we did, uh, quarant or quarantine video. And I remember Eric telling me, he said, you know, I don't know if my horn playing, uh, you know, I haven't played for a little bit. And it sounds awesome. And I was all bugged because I had been practicing a lot. And then, you know, I, I, you know, Eric sounded the way he sounds without practicing at all. So, you know, Eric is uh, a man of many talents. For me, but what I'm doing on in quarantine is just, <laughs> I've been... <laughs> I've been trying to practice, and um, then it's like just keeping up with everything else. I mean, you guys know, and to everybody watching, I think that, that undoubtedly the quarantine has been hard for everybody, uh, particularly musicians, because we don't get to interact. 
Um, but you know, the teaching thing um, is very is it, it's more challenging. I find I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but it's it's hard because um, uh, you know the interaction is there's a distance, and obviously it's not the same. Um, but um, but I think um all the meetings and stuff too there's just like a million meetings of you know how, how do you get a, a sound on your computer to sound like you <laughs> so um i don't know if uh, if ottawa is gonna cover any of that stuff but i think that we, um, between the three of us um uh, there are plenty of answers about all this because we've gone through a whole you know semester of stuff to try to cover all this all this material and uh, we will pass it along to you Oh uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, um, I just I just found this thanks to Yale. Found this at this program called Clean Feed, which actually solves most of the audio problems in Zoom. And um, I think I sent you a copy of that, Kevin. But but I have directions for it, Eric. If you if you need okay. them, yeah. I just did a seminar this morning with it, uh, except for something wrong with my headphones. Everything else, it was like when the students play. It sounds like them. It has real dynamics and it has real overtones, and uh, and it doesn't have syncing problems and any of the things that we're used to. Zoom. Just when I'm getting used to Zoom. <laughs> well, no, you still use Zoom. Okay. It takes over the audio portion of Zoom. I see. Okay. And, and does a much better job with it. So. Yeah. Well, I have to I have to respond to Kevin because he's he's too nice uh, and also too humble. Um, because not only does he sound awesome in that video as always, uh, and he's been managing to practice, which I don't know how he does it, but he actually made the videos. So that's, I can answer for him too, that um, we all did our little, you know, one or three minute clips and then Kevin stayed up all night and put them all together in a super <laughs> professional way. And, and so an, another man of many talents, Kevin Cobb, ladies and gentlemen. I, and I I know that's not easy putting those those different yeah. videos together. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone, it, even a trumpet player. <laughs> it takes hours and hours and hours. I'm glad I haven't had to do it yet. Same. Um, so, um, do you you must have, and I wonder if you can put it in, into words uh, uh, less than an hour. What what is your your teaching philosophy? Stunned silence. That's, yeah. that's what I usually get from people. Well, I um, I spent hours and hours um, coming up with a t teaching philosophy that I put on my website, uh, which is a new website, ericgreenhorn.com, and uh, it's under. That's awesome, by the way. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I uh, I put it. It's it's at the top under philosophy, and um, and you can read it there because I don't remember what I wrote. Uh, no, I'm I'm only joking, but. Uh, <laughs> No, I, um, you know, I, th there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about teaching. Um, for me, the most important thing uh, when working with a student or a group of students is to teach them all as individuals and to, um, to instill the fact that there is no one way to do anything, to get from A to B, uh, or, and also that, you know, maybe B is not where you're going to get to, uh, that sort of thing. Like, uh, just sort of, I, I take a pretty biological approach to things and, um, and I, I like to get to know students as individuals and, and teach them uh, and work with them with, on the things that, that they personally are hoping to work on. That's great. How do you, how do you feel about um, a student who imitates you? Good question. Um, I don't know if I've ever had that experience, uh, but but it seems um, it seems like a good idea. <laughs> no, but I, I I'm I'm sort of joking. But I um, you know I I think anybody that imitates their teacher, at least in the way that their teacher. Uh, approaches practicing and studying and continually improving themselves. I think that's a good idea. But of course, as a teacher, you know, it's my job to encourage a student to find their own voice and not to just try to do it like me or like anybody else. 
Yeah, I'm, when, I'm always nervous when I hear somebody imitating me because I realize eventually I'm going to hear nothing but my bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I try to steer them away from that as soon as I see it happening. Um, yeah, I, so Kevin, tell us, uh, tell us about this. So I, I, I think very similar to Eric, and I'm sure you as well, Ransom, I, that, you know, the, the, um, every student is an individual. And, um, uh, you know, the, I think for my younger students particularly, uh, I think there's an emphasis on fundamentals. Um, I, I believe in that sort of all the way, any age. <laughs> You're never too old for fundamentals, never too advanced for fundamentals. So I think there's a lot that comes through uh, the study of fundamentals, the detailed work through the, just the simple, simple exercises, um, it, you know, tone production, ease, uh, trying to get your playing to be easy is a big, big um, motivator for me personally. And I pass that along to my students, whether they liked it or not. I'm trying to, uh, uh, but I, I, I in, in all honesty, though, I really do feel like, you know, so many things in brass playing come, come back to ease of playing, endurance, uh, range, um, you know, even articulation, things like that. Uh, the, the easier you can get get it to go, uh, the, the better things are going to be. It's that way with every, every instrument, I understand. But, you know, there are certain things that really, I think, in brass playing in particular, um, if you're not playing efficiently, mm. you, you're in trouble. So um, that that's something that uh, I tend to come back to with all my students. What um, you guys have played together in a group for a long time. And um, Ages. groups are not easy. Uh, uh, it's it's not easy to travel together. It's not easy to to, to keep. What do you mean? What do you? <laughs> it's nice. it's super easy. <laughs> can, Sorry, you can edit that out later. Yeah. <laughs> Please repeat the question. Yeah. <laughs> Being, what's it like to to have been in the same group traveling around the world together for so long? Kevin, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I say this um, all the time. Being in a group like ours is like being in a in a uh, in a family, that, and there are goods and bads about that. We know each other well. We know our idiosyncrasies. Um, you know, there. I think we travel actually quite well together compared to a lot of groups. Um, everybody in our group is is really laid back for the most part. Um, and so, you know, it's it, it's easy. Um, I know all of us have, have done um, work with groups that I know of um, that will remain unmentioned. Uh, that can be a real pain, you know. And you, you, sometimes, you know, you know, you're roaming with somebody or anyway. But um, but our group is is very low maintenance that way. Um, and uh, we get we get uh, into it when we have to like dig into the music uh so when we have rehearsals um and uh and we start digging into the music then then we'll start going at each other a little bit um and and you know that's where you want it that's where you want the tensions to be you want to, to struggle over trying to get the music out you don't want to struggle about like you know what airline are we going to take that doesn't need to be an issue but uh, i don't know eric what do you think well, I, I always remember something I heard uh, about chamber music in general, and this certainly applies to, to brass quintet, um, but that it's pretty easy and it becomes easier and easier as time goes by to find five really great brass players uh, to make a quintet. Like that's pretty easy, uh, especially around New York, you know, where we live, you know, you can throw a stone and find what you need. But um, but getting five guys that can like be in a van for three hours together is is a is is a little bit more challenging, um, and and I think uh, you know this it's a testament to the American Brass Quintet that uh, in the application and audition process that they we uh, I haven't been part of an audition yet because I'm the newest member, but. Um, the group has uh, always looked at, you know, personality and, uh, you know, individual goals, uh, how 
I remember being asked, how, how do you think you'll fit into this group? Uh, what can you, what do you bring to this group? What are your, what's important to you? Um, and I think, you know, that what that does is it fosters a sense of, um, of individualism and, and, you know, personal space. And, and that, that sort of translates into what we do when we're playing. And then it translates into, you know, what seat we choose on the plane. We're like leaving each other alone, uh, basically to do, uh, what we each need to do is like trust and there's uh, respect there. Um, it's huge, important uh, factors in a group. So that, that really is, that really is true. I, I, I just go just to say, I mean, we <laughs> to speak about the audition process a little bit for the ABQ. I mean, we, um, we do an interview and it's a big part of, of what we do in terms of select selecting a new member. Um, and uh, it, it's it's really important, as Eric said, to have an individual who has their own voice, um, who has their own musical ideas. But you also need to know you can live with this person, and and that's really important. We we often joke that the, the real audition should be that we get into a van and drive around Manhattan for two hours, and then go to a diner and then see how we split the bill together, you know, uh, and then, then then we'll figure it out who's going to be. But um, but that really is a component that is, is, is crucial because there's, you know, when we go on tour and we do a class or a concert or something, you know, the, the, the students and, and Idlewild students too, I mean, you guys are going to see us for a, a short little bit. Um, if we were on tour, we would have, you know, the rest of the day that we're going to spend together and try to figure out how we're going to rehearse and who's going to practice and who's going to, you know, do all that stuff. And uh, it's a lot. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make it happen. So. Are you uh, are, are are you free to talk about uh, some funny things that happen on the road? No funny things happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before Eric, you know, there's there's a lot actually. Before um, <laughs> before Eric was in the group, um, one of our members went to the wrong airport. <laughs> we, were, we were leaving on a big domestic tour. Um, they, they, uh, you know, and that's, it's a minor thing, I suppose. Although, you know, we're, you know, when you're going on the road for two and a half weeks or something and the very first thing, you know, we're all supposed to be, we're all waiting at Newark. It's like, where is this guy? Yeah. He's at LaGuardia. <laughs> well, so, I've, yeah. heard, I've heard stories, a bunch of stories about the van doors being left open. That's a, that's a thing, right? <laughs> that's a great story actually that's a that's a fantastic fantastic story about uh we were we were in idaho and uh it was it started you know uh, our, our former horn player david wakefield uh you know it, it uh it started to really snow and he had left his music at the hotel right before the concert so um you know we were giving him a hard time we were like oh dave how could you do this you know and uh we had gentle ribbing in, in our group uh there's there, there's a philosophy uh called the birdwell law which is a, the original horn player uh well sorry the second second horn player in the american brass quartet, ed birdwell and the birdwell law states that uh, if you make fun of somebody somebody else for something it will come back to you twice you know twice twofold so you have to be very careful you can't really go after somebody and and so you know you can you can rib them a little bit but it all in good nature so so we were we were giving dave a hard time he goes out to the van of course he comes back and he said well it's a good thing that i left my music because somebody left the, the van door open and there's like two inches of snow and it was already <laughs> 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 it's like okay you know there you go so yeah. Good times. Rose Law. <laughs> Coming well, back on all of us. Happy to hear that you guys still take the same flights. That's 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 not a given with with uh, I mean string quartets. I heard about one string quartet where they had four separate flights every every time. They didn't want to see each other at all uh, off stage. Uh, that's that's good to know. Well, we get along best actually at the bars afterwards. Uh, yeah. You go out to the restaurant and just sort of like hang. So. Yeah, we get along. Oh, that's great. That's a good thing. That is great. Well, um, you guys are delightful to talk to. Of course, I know you both, so wow, I'm in really bad life here. Uh, so I knew that would be the case. But uh, we are so fortunate to have these two guys from the American Brass Quintet 
uh, Eric Reed and Kevin Cobb with us at Idlewild. I mean, it's a it's a dream come true for me. So um, I'm I'm really really happy and and thanks for your time to talk to me and I will see you guys very soon. Thank you. Can't wait. Yeah, it's yeah I hope hope, uh, hope if you're watching this uh, and you're interested in learning about some brass stuff, please sign up. Yeah, sign up, sign up. Yeah, we'll see you next week.